Hello dears. I um, It's my birthday and so I didn't do a lot of work work like editing in the computer and stuff like that. Uh, I did a yoga class and then I thought I would paint a little bit here with you. And I wanted to show you how, so this is my flower sketchbook, the one that I'm just doing florals in. So let's see, the half bouquet, that's the class that a lot of you have taken. And then I've just been playing with blush and apple blush with these bouquets. And for this one, I wanted to show you how I will loosely take a bouquet from a picture and who knows, I might flip through the book, but this is the book that I have talked about a lot, Color Me Floral by Kiana Underwood. She's probably, well, she's definitely in my top three floral designers. And so sometimes what I'll do is just take one of her pictures and get an idea and then kind of like as a starting point so that I'm not copying her picture, but I'll use it as a starting point and then I'll go pick it up so on other pages for other pictures. So let's just start and see where it goes. I've got my gouache palette here. I might use some acro gouache too, I don't know yet. And um, the gouache is a opaque watercolor. This is an airtight palette I like to use. I have a link to it uh, on my website, but I'll, I can put it in the descriptions. I'm just going to give these a spray because they've been sitting a while. Sometimes I'll spray them, sometimes I'll do a um, pipette and add a little water. One of these guys. So, like I can see this blue needs a bit of water. But the spray gives them an overall spa treatment. <laughs> All right. I don't really have a plan other than what I've just shared, so we will see where this goes. I'm going to try to make room for all this, but still allow you to see it. Yes, I've had a lovely day at yoga class. You know, they ask you to set an intention, and I haven't really even made time for a yoga class. I do some stretches at home, but my intention was to have a joyful and peaceful day. And I think I've been doing pretty well with that. All right, let's see if that works. I'm gonna make sure you can see, kind of. Well, that's gonna have to, yeah, at least you can see the sketchbook. Okay. I think what I'll do first is sketch very loosely with um, a corally color. So this shape of this, what I like about her work is she doesn't make the like funeral floor arrangements where they're just all in a ball and um, you know, they're not cascading. You see more and more people doing the cascading. I just love it. So I'm just gonna play, this is gonna be small, but I'm just gonna play with say a vessel there and then some flower shapes and try to capture the cascading stuff. When I started doing bouquets, I made the, you, you tend to make the elements smaller than they really should be. So I try to work on, you know, larger blooms. So I'm just kind of sketching in some of these shapes. Some cascading things. And so I kind of get a start like that. And then I might turn the page or go to another reference. Whoops and pick up something else that I like in this. Or 
I just kind of look at my bouquet and say, okay, I've got big ones here, you know, maybe do some small ones here. This is going to be a really full and cascady type of bouquet. It'll just give me a jumping off point. Let's see, something maybe going like this here. Some leaves. Maybe some more leaves coming down here. I've just added a lot of water to this squash, so it's made it, you know, almost like a well, it is kind of like a watercolor. Let's see. Trying to stay loose and not get too fussy. Okay, I think that's all I really need from those reference photos, so I'm gonna get the book out of the way. And then you might, whoops, didn't mean to drop you a book. Then you might um, think about the colors that you want. You could have a different reference for colors. I'm just gonna kinda play here. Maybe I'll make these. larger ones roses and let's try to do something like a a white um, well a peachy white You know, if you've taken my classes or watched me, it, um, it's, it's really all a matter of layers. So there's so many ways to do it. Gosh, you can paint the whole bloom in some sort of background color. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I do it like this. So try not to make your blooms perfectly round that's such a just you you really I have to anyway consciously say okay I'm not gonna do that <laughs> unless you want that kind of stylized look make sure you can see that paints I just get one layer down and let it dry. I think I'll make this color palette on the softer side. But you never know where it's going to go. that orange. It's a Winsor Newton marigold color. And if you're gonna do um, a 
background color over and you don't have to worry about your sketch marks but even if you don't I mean it's a sketchbook so it doesn't have to be perfect and play with some leaves now make some greens Adding pink to green is a nice way to calm it down. And it also, so it'll subdue it. Um, I talk about that in my new color mixing class. If you use a opposite, a color opposite on the color wheel, it'll subdue. Oh, that's such a pretty green. Uh, whenever you know a, a, a color happens that I like, I just then I have to go and put it in other places. This is turning out to be more like a uh, watercolory gouache sketch, which I like doing both styles. I like the more intense ones and also the softer ones with more white space. I'm going to take that green in another direction and knock it back a little bit. Maybe lighten it up. You know what I just learned about pigment? So, you know, I was, I love gouache. And I love watercolor too. I just love the color intensity that I can get with gouache. And so I was, I don't know if I was listening to a podcast or then I started reading about it. You know, what makes gouache gouache? You know, what what is it that they're doing to it? Because it's a watercolor. And... Um, Oh, see, I was talking. That was going to be a flower. Well, it might still be later. We'll see. Um, that was going to be leaves, and this was going to be a flower, but I could just go over it if I, if I decide to. Anyway, gouache pigments, the, the actual pigment particles are larger than watercolor. And they also add a chalk type component and sometimes just white to get that opacity up. I thought that was interesting. Let's put some darks in, in here with some water. Just some loose kind of in between the blooms, there's usually shade. And maybe we'll do some violet or dark, no, more of a plum centers. I did want that to be a flower. It's okay. We'll st I'll step. I'll let myself step back from it and th see what I think. Let's go back and do a stem here. I kind of like the pink showing through. I have another flower over here. Ooh, that's pretty green. some greenery around these little oranges. Maybe some greenery here.
It's amazing. It just takes so little actual paint to do a little sketch. <laughs> Sometimes I really like to play with, if you look at a bouquet and you see like something coming off it like this, it looks like that. It doesn't really have to have these leaf shapes. It's just pretty greenery. It's soft and nice. It doesn't even need to be green. Let's do some, I'm missing my turquoise. This whole sketchbook process because you know what my favorite part of this little painting is so far one of the parts that was the easiest right in here this greenery right here is really lovely that's one of the things I'm trying to remind myself that sometimes um, less effort and more looseness for this kind of painting I mean if you're doing a Technical illustration, of course, no, but I'm going to try, let's see, I wish you all could vote. Do I go over those? Well, definitely I need to go over that with something because it's just too green. Let me make a light turquoise. Let's see what that does. It could be a flower that's turquoisey. Mm, such a pretty color. That's gonna probably have to be my vase color because it's so pretty. Do you find you get into certain colors and they're they make you happy and then like there are always the ones that seem to continually make me happy but lately it's this kind of warm turquoise Playing with how wide the vase is is always fun. I've made them wider and then I've said no that was too wide and painted over them and then I think about okay the the bouquet doesn't need to be because I'm doing one of these cascading kind of off-center bouquets so it doesn't need to be centered over it but it does have to feel that it's not gonna tip over otherwise it's just not pleasant to look at. <laughs> If you have this feeling that the the whole arrangement's about to fall over, <laughs> then instead of enjoying a painting, you're thinking about your bouquet that fell over and how you're going to have to clean it up. <laughs> so I think about that sometimes. This one is a little in danger of that. I'm going to put something else over here. Something to... Maybe some... We haven't done these small little flowers. Hmm, that's pretty. Now I'm going to have to put one over here. Maybe, let's see, I could go here, but I really don't want to make that ball shape, so I kind of want to leave some emptiness there. Maybe I'll just put a few of them here. I 
And before that dries too much, I want to just make a tiny little stem. Yeah, that helped the balance. And I'm just going to make an off. Maybe an off white to go in here a little bit. I think I wanted to do a floral because I just finished filming my whole um, next series on abstracts, um, which is going to get released, I think, in the next couple weeks. But I, I was wondering, why do you want to do a floral? I think it's because I missed them. And so what I'm going to do is take a break because I need it from, you know, class production right now. And then even, I love it though so much. But anyway, and then I think in the fall, I'm going to do a floral series where we'll do them small ones and then we'll do them in the sketchbook. I mean, sketchbook in the small ones and then all the way up to a canvas. That'll be fun. I think I'm going to do some more of that off-white just here and there. I like it, how it kind of brings some cohesiveness. Every time you play in a sketchbook, you learn something. That's why I like calling them learning sessions. Well, I think that's good for now. Let that sweet little thing dry and Maybe come in, you know, see what it needs and come in a little later. Thanks for joining me. I hope you get your sketchbook out or a piece of paper and play. I always say that. I always I say I'm going to stop and then I don't. Okay, I'm going to stop. <laughs> We'll see you later. See you next time. Thanks for watching.